In this video, we're going to learn how to implement the bubble sort algorithm in Python. So the bubble sort algorithm can be used to sort a list of values. For example, if we have a list A of integer values 6, 5, 3, 1, 8, 7, 2, and 4, the bubble sort algorithm could be used to sort this list in ascending order from 1 to 8. The algorithm works by making passes through the list, and with each pass through the list, the items at adjacent indexes are going to be compared. So first, these two items here at these indexes would be compared. Then the items at these indexes would be compared. Then the items at these indexes would be compared all the way up to the last two indexes in the list. Now, if we're trying to sort the list in ascending order, that would mean the item at this index here should be greater than or equal to the item at this index here. Now in this case, because five is not greater than or equal to six, we're going to swap these two items. So we would have five here and then six here. Then the items at these two indexes would be compared next. And again, three is not greater than or equal to six. So we would swap these two items. We would have three and then six. Then six and one would be compared and one is again not greater than or equal to six. So we would swap these items and we would have one and six. Now, when we compare six and eight here, this time eight is greater than or equal to six. So there would be no swap. Then we would compare eight and seven and seven is not greater than or equal to eight. So we would swap these items. We would then have seven and eight. Then we would compare eight and two, there would be a swap and we would have two and eight because two is not greater than or equal to eight. Then we would compare eight and four here and four is not greater than or equal to eight. So we would have four and eight after the swap. Now notice that the list is more sorted than it was before. In particular, the largest item in the list eight is now at the last index in the list. If we keep making passes like this through the list, we can completely sort the list. To completely sort the list, we can make one less pass through the list than there are items in the list. So here, because we have eight items in the list, we can make seven passes through the list to be sure the list is going to be completely sorted. And that is the bubble sort algorithm. Let's implement it now in Python. The first thing we'll do is find the length of the list using the built-in len function. So we'll pass the len function a, and this function is going to return the length of the list, in this case, eight. We'll store that into a variable called length. Then we'll create an outer loop to conduct that number of passes minus one through the list. So we'll have four i in range, and we'll have zero to length, minus one. So this loop is going to run length minus one number of times. And the counter variable i is going to go from zero by one with each loop iteration all the way up until, but not including, length minus one. So i is going to go from zero to one to two all the way up until, but not including, length minus one. Next, we'll make an inner loop to carry out each individual pass through the list. So we'll have four j in range 0 to length minus 1. So this loop has a counter variable j that like i is going to go from 0 up until but not including length minus 1 by 1 with each loop iteration. So this list here has indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So in the first loop iteration j is going to be set to 0 which is the first index in the list. Then in the next loop iteration, j is going to be one, which is the next index in the list. Then in the next iteration, j is going to be two, which is the next index in the list. And this will continue up until this index here. And what we'll do is compare the item at the index j to the item at the index j plus one. And we'll see if those items should be swapped and we'll swap them if they should be swapped. So down here, we'll have if the item at the index j is greater than the item at the index j plus one, this means those items should be swapped. 
because if this item here is larger than this item here, they're not in ascending order and they should be swapped. So to swap them, we'll have a at the index j, comma, a at the index j plus one is equal to a at the index j plus one, comma, a at the index j. And this is how we can do a swap in Python. We're assigning the value at the index j plus one to the index j, while also assigning the value at the index j to the index j plus one. We don't need a temporary variable like in some other languages in Python. We can do it like this and perform both assignments at the same time. Then we could output the new sorted list with print A. Then we could save our program and try it out. And we'll get here the list sorted in ascending order from one to eight. Now there are some performance optimizations we can make. Remember how after the first pass through the list, the largest item in the list ended up at the last index of the list. In subsequent passes through the list, there's no point in comparing this item here to this item here, because we already know the item at this last index here is the largest item in the list. So in a similar way, in the second pass through the list, the second largest item of the list, in this case seven, is going to end up at the second last index of the list here. Then in subsequent passes, there's no point in comparing this item here to this item here because we already know the item at this index here is the second largest item in the list and no swap is going to occur. So what we can do is with each pass through the list, we can go one item less deep into the list with our comparisons. So after the first pass through the list, we'll have gone through all these items here. But then after the next pass through the list, we'll only go this deep into the list. Then after the next pass through the list, we'll only go this deep into the list. We'll achieve this by having length minus i minus one here. So j is going to go from zero up until, but not including length minus i minus one. So i begins off at zero, which means initially the pass is going to involve all the items in the list, but then in the next iteration of this outer loop, i is going to be one. So when the inner loop executes again to perform a pass, we're going to go one item less deep into the list with our comparisons. And it's going to continue like that with each iteration of the outer loop to conduct another pass. This is not going to affect the correctness of the algorithm. It's just going to be a performance optimization. If we save the program and try it out, we'll get the correct result with the list sorted in ascending order. Now, another optimization we can make is to perform less passes through the list if they're not necessary. So for example, imagine we have a list like this, where we have one to eight, and the only items out of order are right here. Five and four are not in the correct order. After one pass through the list, four and five are going to be swapped and then the list is going to be in order. As our algorithm is right now, we're going to continue to make more passes through the list. What we could do is detect whether or not any swaps occurred. And if no swaps occur, then that tells us that the list has been sorted already. So what we'll do is have a Boolean variable swapped and we'll set swapped equal to false before each run of the inner loop. And if a swap does occur, we'll set swapped equal to true. Now, if not swapped, in other words, if there was no swap, then what we'll do is break to stop the outer loop. And this will prevent additional passes through the list from occurring and doing more passes than are necessary to sort the list. So if we save the program and try it out, we'll find again the list is sorted. Now we could put this code in a function so we could call that function to sort lists again and again throughout our program. We could have here def and bubble sort. We could turn a into a parameter of the function and we could turn this into the function body. Then down here, we could call bubble sort and pass it a. 
And if we save the program and try it out, we'll again have a sorted list, but this time we're calling a function to do the work. Now, if we want to sort the list in descending order, all we have to do is change this greater than to a less than. So if here I had less than, and then we save the program and try it out, we'll get the list sorted in descending order from eight to one. So the bubble sort algorithm is not a particularly efficient algorithm. There are much more efficient algorithms like quick sort or merge sort that we would use if we actually had to sort something large. But the bubble sort algorithm is helpful for learning about sorting algorithms. So this is how we can implement the bubble sort algorithm in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.